Hey everyone. So yesterday I used marriage as a metaphor for our relationship with God, and I'm going to start by doing that in a similar way. So I want you to imagine a wedding ceremony where the groom is making the following vows to uh, his bride-to-be. He says, I will kiss you twice daily with one kiss lasting at least two seconds. I will make at least one statement implying thoughtfulness and or love every morning. I will provide three hugs per week of medium snugness lasting three seconds. Flowers will be provided on four dates of the year of your choosing. So how do you think the bride-to-be is going to respond to those kind of vows? I'm guessing she's not going to swoon. All right, these kind of vows don't sound like a commitment to a loving relationship. They sound like rules. And while a loving husband, hopefully, will do these sort of actions, they're done because of the relationship, not because it's a rule. God expects the same. And yet our habit is to focus more on the rules than the relationship, or to think that that's what God wants. Right? Our relationship with God is defined by do this, don't do that. Now, certainly any relationship is going to have boundaries. Wives and husbands make a vow of faithfulness. If that faithfulness is broken, the marriage may end, but it ends not just because somebody broke some rule, it, because it shows that the relationship itself is broken. God approaches humanity in the same way. God first makes a covenant, which is less than a, of a legal contract and more of a commitment to a relationship. You know, in scripture, God only, in a sense, breaks up with Israel when it's clear the relationship is irreparable, not just because they broke the rules, right? Them breaking the law, the rules, is a sign that the relationship is done. And yet, actually, God never fully gives up on the relationship. But as you go through the story of Scripture, God does give up on the rules or the law. Now, this approach to a relationship with God, it sounds like lawlessness, right? Anything goes. That's not what it is. It is lawlessness, but it's the kind of lawlessness that Paul continually encourages and defends in his letters. He says in Galatians 5.16, Walk by the Spirit, and you won't carry out the desires of the flesh. This kind of freedom, it seems scarier than just following some rules, but that's how a real relationship works. This spirit-centered walk with God is the only thing that will truly let us live to experience God's love.